Sure, I'm sitting in the back. Sure. Good luck. I appreciate you sitting near the back, though, so you wouldn't be so, so disruptive. Okay, three o'clock, let's go. All right, settle on, guys, please. Thank you. All right, so uh, the um, the um, features list is due this evening at 12, so I'll be collecting those early tomorrow morning. And something I didn't mention, oh, I know I mentioned, but I'll mention again, is, you know, when you have entered your each feature, there was a column where you were to put down which milestone, milestone one, two, or three. So, you know, the let's say the features list is due on the fourth today. I think the projects are, you know, to be presented, turned in and presented on, you know, uh, uh, November 30th. And then I don't have the exact numbers in my head, but they're on, you know, they're in the documentation for the project. There's a milestone one, a milestone two, and essentially, you know, what was labeled, uh, one second, MS3, milestone three. And you were supposed to put down, you know, what and which milestone, which milestone date you would be delivering. So you'll be turning in the project, the features list, we'll talk more about that in you know, a week or two, uh, on those two milestone dates. And then we're going to evaluate your submission to see if you actually completed the features you said you would complete, you know, on that date, on that miles, in that milestone. The purpose is, of course, is to, you know, have you, well, first of all, it's how a real project is run. You know, you have milestones in a, in a real situation to meet as a professional, as a, as a team. But also to keep, for this situation, you know, to keep people from 
teams, I should say, from doing all the work at the end. So well, you'll be graded on how you know if you meet your milestone one deliverable, two, and then the final deliverable, and according to what you said you would in the features list. A um, little advice: if you haven't, you know, if you have yet to set it up, you know, you want to divide the work evenly across all three milestones. So if you have ten features, you know, three, three, and four. And another piece of advice: now and in the future. Don't put off the difficult ones to the end. You know, don't cherry pick the easy features for milestone one and two. Put off all the hard ones, you know, where you might have some difficulty to the last minute. Because that's where you might get, those are the ones, those are the features you're most likely to have difficulty with. And, uh, and if you wait to the last minute, to the project delivery date, you know, you're gonna have, you know, you're gonna run into a wall. You may not be able to finish, or at least you'll be miserable in the amount of work you'll have to do. So do the difficult ones first, or second. Don't wait. Don't put them off to the end. Again, good project. Good project management uh, advice. Any questions about that? All right. Well, okay. The uh, midterm, of course, is on Friday. I've gone over it so many times. I don't want to say it again. Look at the study guide, of course. And make sure you bring your comic card. Physically bring, you can't bring a picture of, oh, that's a good point. You cannot bring a picture on your phone of your comic card. Won't work. They want the card. They want, I'm sure they want to swipe the card, the magnetic strip on it. So they won't look in. They won't take, won't take the test. I was, I saw on UTD Reddit over the weekend that it's kind of a, kind of a, not a very pleasant experience in that room. I, I can't, I don't know. Sorry. Suck it up. You know, maybe you could bring little little, little foamy earplugs, you know, if you're easily distracted by noise. I don't know. I mean, it's no worse. It's no better. I mean, imagine taking the test in this room, you know, elbow to elbow, elbow to elbow. Not all that much better here. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so let's see. I thought there was a third one. Oh, attendance. So I'm going to give you the word of the day, but I'm not going to put it on. So although I am, uh, I don't know what you call it, uh, broadcasting the, uh, the lecture like I have been all along on eLearning Collaborate, although I am recording, yes, I am, the lecture, I will not be giving the, the attendance word online. So only those people in the room qualify you know, for the attendance. Now there's uh, three people online. So that's if they're actually there. Uh, that's uh, you know what it is. So that is what it is. <laughs> that's the word. Don't put it on chat. Please don't give it away. I mean, there's only three people out there, so um, yeah. So that's it. Now, if you have, uh, if you've been quarantined, you know, if you have an excuse and it's documented and the you know, the school sent me, uh, uh, you know, that notification that, you know, this person is, is quarantined for the next whatever, 10 days or whatever it is. Then, yes, I'll give you the credit for being, you know, if you're online, you get credit for attending. But that's, you know, that's a special circumstance. Okay. So by midnight tonight. All right. Any qu other questions? Any questions at all? Not specific. All right, so we're going to talk about, you know, the uh, the uh, asteroids game this week, and we're going to talk specifically about the a library, a functionality that we you know have integrated into the game that you know makes it much easier to to build the game. So let's let's first go look at the uh, original game, the one that you're being provided, I should say. And um, and I can't think of anything to say here while I'm waiting. There it goes. Um, so there's a game running. And so you no, know, so we have these images, these you know these, uh, and they're moving on the screen, and we can rotate them and move them in a particular direction. We can create them. 
they react, they interact with each other. Um, you know, they reflect off the edge of the screen, as you've noticed. There's collisions. Oh, they just barely, wow, look at that. <laughs> this is it's like that close apart. Uh, and, and so on. So it seems complicated, you know, it seems like there's a lot to it, but it's really remarkably easy to, to build that using the functionality that we'll be describing in this section uh, in the next couple of days. Okay. Each of these images that can be independently moved and rotated and so on, they're called a sprite. And that's just a term game in, you know, from 2D, 2D game delivered, um, 2D arcade games. So each image is its own object, and that object is named or called a sprite. So we're going to talk about a library move for processing that provides sprite capabilities or sprite. Okay. All right, so I guess let's close that. So what's a sprite? A sprite is an image that can be placed, drawn on the canvas, on the screen. It can be picked, it can be placed at a particular location on X, Y, you know, location, coordinate on the screen. It can be rotated and other things we'll talk about in a second. Um, you know, the sprites can overlap each other. They can touch. And when they touch, that's called a collision. And we can detect using this library. We can detect when two sprites have collided and then, you know, do something, write some code, like blow them up. Uh, and we'll talk, you know, we'll talk about how to do that. <clears throat> you can also manipulate them with a the mouse. And that's how the buttons work. You know, the start button is a button. That's a sprite. And we can detect when the user, you know, taps the button, does a button down, selects that, that sprite, that image. All right. Sprite is, you know, this uh, sprite capability is uh, not built into processing. It's provided by one of the three libraries that you installed. You know, when you installed processing, you should have installed processing. I didn't make it into assignment. And uh, the documentation for that library is at this link. So right there. And so under sprite library reference, this is the documentation for all of the operations or methods that we will you know, talk about in this section. All right, so that, how that works. Right. There's the ruling. There it is. Okay. Um, all right. So that, that functionality, you know, that to draw a sprite, move a sprite, collide with other sprites, and so on. That's provided by two classes provided by that library. And so I know that, you know, we have a pretty broad range of um, experience in this class, you know, action, I should say. And so, you know, about, I'm not going to give it a number. So, so you know, some of you, um, you know, have no experience at all with any of this. And so you don't know what a class is. What's a class? What's a method? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a section to describe that. But let me repeat, you know, this is not material that will be on the final exam. We're gonna cover a couple more sections between now and the end of the semester. And the exam will probably cover a couple of sections from the midterm, right? But I won't be testing the object oriented concepts. So what I want people to do, the people without the experience, is to relax, okay? Don't freak out. Oh my God, I don't understand what he's talking about. I am in trouble. No, you don't, all right? I would, the, the, the goal here is, you know, some of it will rub off on you, you know? You know, some of you will take away more than others and I can't, you know, that's, that's okay. Um, but, you know, the people in, you know, who are just starting out, it'd be nice if you just came away with the basic concepts. You'll be learning classes and object oriented if not next semester, then you know uh, the, the you know the your first semester of your sophomore year. Okay, I'm not really sure when it shows up. To be perfectly honest, um, but um, yeah, but yeah, this, these concepts will be so. But you know, maybe you'll get a feeling for it. You know, some of it will rub off. 
you know, some of the concepts of good, pro, you know, practical software engineering, you know, practices in software engineering. Some of that will rub off. It should rub off on all of you, actually. So that's the point of the project, you know, to give you an experience of how a non-trivial, you know, 100, <laughs> non-trivial programs are built, they're written, they're designed, uh, nothing terribly deep, and hopefully a little bit entertaining, you know? So that's where we're coming from. So two, two classes that are being used in this, uh, from this library, the functionality provided by the S4P library that you installed when you installed processing. One class, one set of functionality is called, it's named Sprite, and we'll see it in the code. And the second, in the Sprite class, I should not go so quick there, the Sprite class is all about presenting a, an image on the screen. The ship is an instance of a sprite. Is a, is a, each asteroid is a separate instance, an object of type sprite. The missiles, I guess that's about it. All the, the power-ups, you know, they're all sprites and each one is a separate instance, but the class sprite, you know, provides the, the functions, the operations, which are also called methods, that are used to manipulate each instance. We'll see examples of that coming up. The second class is called S4P, which is the name of the library, Sprites for Processing. And it only really provides two operations that I show you how to use. One is to update the sprites, and the second is to draw the sprites. And that's already built into the game, it's already set up. You don't have to change it. And generally speaking, you don't have to understand how it works as long as you don't change it. So we'll see how that you know, how that's all set up in, in, a, in this section. Okay, one other thing I've added. Let me bring up the. Uh, let me bring it up. Oh, I'm sorry. I know what it did. Um, okay, sorry, people online didn't see any questions. Uh, all right, so let me back. Let me get back to what I was thinking of. I had a collapsed window. I couldn't see the, the chat if somebody had a question. Um, so again, you know, all of this material, uh, it's been updated over the weekend, by the way. All of these examples uh, and the slides are on process, are on the e-learning under a section called processing materials or asteroids or something, I don't remember the name, but it's, it's right there on, in a folder, you know, in, on uh, e-learning. Okay, so here we have processing. And uh, so, let's go back here first. So remember I said before, you know, when processing starts, it looks for, you know, functions with particular names in the processing program. And then if it finds them, it calls them. And we talked about two of them already. We talked about a, a, pro, a function called setup and then a function called draw. And I described this a couple of times now. I said, when processing starts, it looks for setup, and if it finds it, it calls setup. Remember, the purpose of the setup function is to do initialization. Initialize, as we'll see how in a second. And then it calls draw, and then it call, when draw is finished, you know, it calls draw again. And each time draw is called, it's meant to, you know, update in the next frame, you know. Um, but uh, now we, I installed something else. A capability of processing is to is to specify another function, and it's kind of weird the way I set it up. I don't know what's going on. What's about this? Much more net. My my opinion is much better designs for this. I'm not sure why they did it this way, but they have a function. A fun, it looks for a function called pre, which I think you know I believe stands for pre-draw. So processing will call setup. I should do this. Then I'll call pre if pre exists, and if, when pre is finished, it'll call draw, and when draw is finished, it'll call pre. So pre, is, I would have called update. Functionality in this pre function is just there to update the sprites. Okay, and we'll talk about what that means in a sec. And then the functionality in draw is to draw the sprites. So in the code, in the simple example, here we have the, all three candidates. We have pre, I'm sorry, we have setup, and then we have pre, and then draw. 
And then this is how, well, how we register pre. This is how we turn on pre. Don't worry about it. Just don't touch it. It's in setup. It should be the last, well, I'm not sure where I put it, but it's in setup and you know where you just don't just don't remove it you know, just don't change it and you'll be good by calling this register method pre this it'll look for that function pre and we'll call it before it calls draw so again process setup pre draw pre draw pre draw and then let in a loop so notice the setup let's look at a little bit of setup setup is all about setting up the ship the sprite the ship sprite we create it, we set its properties, and we'll go over these in a second. And then pre, well, not a lot going on with pre right now, but it will be more complicated in the future. Is we update the sprites, remember using the S4P, the class S4P, calling update sprites, just as shown. Don't change it. It'll work. And then in draw, we, now this is what we talked about before, draw first sets the background. Okay? So, you know, it's called, a, well, it's kind of the name, the name of the function's background, and then the image, the variable we're passing on, is also called background. I could have called it BG, probably, because my, my, I hope it's not confusing. Where's background? Well, that's right there. Remember, that's a, that's a variable. Remember, very, we have your types. You can have ints, floats, uh, or say ints, longs, shorts, bytes, okay, floats, doubles, and so on. Um, this variable is a type image, p image. That's all you need to know. And in setup, we load that image from disk and assign it to that variable. So again, setup is all about setting up initialization. And here's where we initialize the image, the background image, that you know we then use to you know erase the cat or set up the canvas before drawing the sprites on top of it, which is done here. So let's just review that. You know, so this is um, the structure of this program, this example, right here. You know, we have the sketchbook folder, SB10. This is, you know, your sketchbook examples. And I you know something I added over the weekend. In that is a function, is a processing program, .pde file, text file. Talked about that already. Has the same name as the folder. But in that same sketchbook folder is another folder called data and it has to have that name in lowercase d a t a and in that are all the images that processing loads so when or this is where processing looks where the images we're trying to load is more to the point so here we're saying load image bg.jpeg and there it is so if you're you know one of the um features 15 you know the little features uh, is to change that background worth 15 points so that you know that's where you want to change it you want to change that image either give it a new image uh, and then and then specify that new image name you know in the setup so that's how that you know that's how that works okay so that's you know that's your point setup you know pre setup pre draw pre draw now, you know, you say, you might say, well, why not we just put everything in draw? What's the point of pre? Well, because as I showed, and it gets more complicated later, the functionality in pre, which would better called update, is to put all the code, the functionality that updates the uh, game from one frame to the next. Okay. And then the draw function is all the functionality for drawing the shapes and text and so on on the screen. If this, you know, as the game grows more complex, we would have more and more code in that draw function, code related to updating the state of the game and code related to drawing the images on the screen. And it's just good software engineering, it's also called cohesive, to split the two apart. That way, you know, if we're looking at the code in the editor and we're saying, Okay, well, if it's in this function, it must have to do with updating, right? It just makes the code easier to understand when you compartmentalize the code according to its purpose in the, in the, in the development of the game. We know that if it has something to do with drawing, it goes in the draw function. If it has something to do with updating the state, it goes in the pre function. If it has to do with initialization, 
it goes in the setup function. Okay? It just, again, it's just a practice that you know you would follow to make the game easier to understand, easier to modify. You know, it's just good software engineering practice. Right, so that's the reason for two functions. Okay, so the sprite class. So let's run that program. That's B10. And there it is. And boom. It brought it drew a sprite, but notice the sprite's up at zero zero in the upper left hand corner. That's because that sprite, its default position is zero zero, and so that's where it gets drawn. Not very interesting, but let's how can we fix that? Well, here in setup, notice that you know we're creating a new sprite. Well, first of all, we have another variable called ship, and its type is sprite, just like this was image or a float or whatever. This is a type sprite, and that's the name of the class. But you don't care, you know, you don't have to worry about too much about that. It's just that, you know, we have a class and we're creating a variable of that type, type sprite, and then here we're initializing it. We're creating a new image, a new sprite, and we're assigning it to that variable, ship. Okay, so now ship maintains a new sprite and the image of that sprite is ships2 and ships2 again is one of the images in the uh, data folder okay. looking at the time trying to check myself okay so now we have a new, now these are additional arguments and let's not worry about those right now so I mean, when you want to create a new sprite you have to follow this pattern this will we'll have other this is a simple we're getting more advanced as we move on but let's just leave it there Okay, so let's say we want to move it, you know, it's in the center. I'm, I'm sorry, it's up in the left, upper left-hand corner right now. So ship, which is to say the class sprite, provides a, a, a function, also called a method, called set x, y, and it takes an x in a y position. So what are we setting it to? We, well, we want the ship to be in the center. So remember that with contains the width of the screen, which is 1,000. Like if you remember in size, we said it's width. So we're setting the width of the X to 1,000 pixels and the Y to 700. So here we're going to take the width divided by 2, height divided by 2, and that's where we're going to set the position of the ship sprite. So when we run it, boom, there it is. Okay. What else can we do? What else can we do? Well, that ship is a little bit big, right, for the size of the canvas. I mean, my opinion, I think, well, the ship's a little big, you know, relative to the size of the canvas, you know, considering we wanted to fly around and dodge asteroids and so on, you know, the thing that large would be is the clumsy, and it just doesn't look right. So here's another function, ship scale. So, you know, this is just an image, again, on in the data folder. We could open this up with an editor and we could reduce, we could scale the image smaller, you know, literally make it a smaller image, fewer pixels. And along the, you know, every image is rectangle. But that's a little bit clumsy because, you know, you, you scale it down, you scale it up, you know, you know, what's the right size? You know, manually changing the size of the image is a bit clumsy. The simpler thing to do is, you know, it has this sprite class, the sprite functionality has uh, a, a um, has a method, a function called scale. So I, I commented that out and let's rerun it. And that's half the size. We set the scale of that image, we you know set it to 0.5 of its original uh, dimensions, its original size. Uh, okay, that actually looks about right, but let's let's goof around a little bit. Let's say let's set it to 0.25. Oh, that feels too small, right? That's not that's not cool. Let's not do that. Let's monkey around. Let's say, well, let's set it to one point two five, which just to demonstrate. And now it's twenty five percent larger than its original size. Yeah. It changes the size of the image in in memory. I, I, is that answer your question? Because I wasn't clear of the question, if I understand. So, let's say you already set it as one. Yeah. But then you set it as one. Oh. 
Oh, oh no, it'll be relative to the original size. Yeah, it won't be 25 and then 25 would have no effect. Not not 25 then 25 again. That's a good question actually, but yeah, it's to the original size. <coughs> so anyway, let's just set it back to where we had it. That, that worked okay for me. Uh, putting a zero is not really required, but anyway. Okay, then, you know, it's running. Oh, sorry, let's rerun it. And so it's, okay, I'm cool with that. But, you know, let's say it's, it's pointed, nothing wrong with that. How do, can we change its direction? The direction the sprite, the image is pointed at? Oh, yeah, we have a capability called set rotation or rote for rotation. And we're giving it a direction. So that's a, a float. And that's it right here. Direction equals... So processing and a lot of um, graphics libraries, game engine stuff, they often will want uh, angles in uh, radians. And that's processing. Processing wants it, whenever you're providing an angle, like a rotation, it wants uh, radians. So, you know, zero to two pi. But kind of hard to think, at least for me, I think in you know, zero to 360. So there's a function built in a processing called radians, and you pass it in a float with a, uh, you know, with an angle, and you know, zero, zero to 360, and it'll convert it to radians. So it'll convert, you know, 180 into pi, and so on. You don't need to see it. I mean, it's all it's all done for you. But anyway, that's where, you know, that's where we set. So we're setting it to 45 degrees. We run it. And there it is, 45 degrees. Okay. And there's other functionality too. So rotation, scale. We'll talk about uh, now processing comes with a simple um, physics engine. We'll talk about that show that in a second. But you, again, you can set the XY position, the rotation, the direction of its movement. Uh, so rotation and direction are two separate things. It's speed and acceleration talked about all this before one other thing a scale we went over you know scale the image and then we can set the z ordering so z ordering is its depth you know we talked about this before if we draw something and then draw something on top of it the thing on top appears to be you know or the thing in behind uh the first thing drawn you know appears to be behind the second thing drawn and so that's z ordering so if i have one sprite and I set it to Z ordering one. And if I have a second sprite and I set a Z order to two, then processing, or this library actually, will draw the ones first and then the two second. And that's how you can stack one sprite on top of another sprite if that's important to your game. Yeah. Uh, no, only sprites. Only, only the sprites. I mean, the images. There was a Z ordering mechanism for that. So that's a good question. I don't know where that comes in. I, I, cause I always just use sprites. I don't have any real images. All the images are, you know, displayed through sprites. Okay. All right. So we can use this, you know, the, a, fun, a method sprite offers set X, Y. And uh, that's what we're using. Uh, you can also use a vector, but I don't want to get into that. So let's just get past it. It's not important to the game. Um, okay, it's in two constructors. You know, I showed before. I said, you know, this is a, you know when I said, don't freak out, don't don't panic. <laughs> like, a, anyway. so this is the constructor here. You know, again, it's new, the name of the class, and then these arguments. And so that's what we're looking at here. The first argument is the p applet. Just you know, just don't change it. You know, I'll give you examples how it works. Um, then there is uh, the string. You know, which is the file name, the image file name. There's rows and columns we'll get to next, probably at Wednesday, oh, definitely on Wednesday. And then the last argument is the Z ordering, one, two, three, four, which determines its stacking. Okay. Um, okay. So now sometimes we want to hide and show sprites. So if you have two um, in the game, if you have the ship and it runs into an asteroid, you want them to both to disappear, right? Um, so, you know, just the idea is, you know, we have a sprite and we can set its property so it's visible, it's drawn on the screen, 
or we can set its property to hidden. It won't be drawn on the screen, all right? So in some cases, you know, when the, when the ship is healthy, we can see it. When it blows up, it disappears. And so again, that's uh, we'll see this used in a later example. But there's two. Uh, there's a property on the sprite uh, called dead, and dead is a boolean. So now this is another example of, I'm not sure what the author was thinking of when he did this, but whatever. Um, dead true, you know, when you are dead, you're invisible. Now I would have done the opposite. I would have said alive, or I just would have said visible, but whatever. Uh, so there's a, again, there's a, a function, uh, a method on Sprite called set dead, and you pass it in a Boolean, and if you set it to true, it's dead. The sprite is dead, invisible. If you said it's false, the sprite is alive, visible. So that's what that's about. And we'll see examples of that coming up. Uh, okay, so let's change this again. So this is kind of like here we have something. I'm going to add up, uh, introduce a concept here. Let's first demonstrate it. So here in Remember, pre, you know, is all about update, you know, setting properties. Let's let's turn this on, and let's add. So here's a a, a method called set acceleration. And so we're passing in two arguments, and this is a second one. It's, it's kind of funny, but is what it is. Um, we're passing in a float for acceleration, and then we're also passing in direction. So let's look at the effect, and then we'll go a little more deep into it. So now the ship is accelerating okay, in a particular direction. In fact, it might be helpful to set the rotation back to its original. So let's just turn it off, run it again. So the rotation of the sprite and its direction are two different things. Okay, that's kind of an interesting concept. And that is an example of a physics engine, which you know I mentioned before, this game has a rudimentary physics engine built into it. So every time we call, every time this update is called, update sprite, um, we're adding a little more acceleration to that sprite in a particular direction. So here's pre, right? That's being called draw pre draw pre and now in pre we're calling this function sprite set acceleration and then the amount of acceleration which determines how fast it's moving so every time pre is called we're adding a little more acceleration it's almost like a constant acceleration if you want to think of it in physics terms we're, we're setting a constant acceleration on that sprite in the direction given by here which is 45. Now we have, we're subtracting two pi, 180 degree, uh, I'm sorry, 45 degrees from it. I don't know why, I think there's a bug in the game. So just know that when you set the acceleration, you have to uh, subtract, you know, essentially what is um, uh, 45 degrees from it. Otherwise it'll, you know, the direction it travels is 45 degrees counter to what you think it should be. You can play with it. Just take my word, you know, this is, I think this is overcoming a bug in the code, but I don't, um, so acceleration is how much force is being applied, you know, how much of this imaginary physics force is being applied. Here's, here is, uh, uh, where is it, right, the acceleration is set to 30. Okay, let's reduce it, set it to one, a 10. We'll run again, again. Notice it's starting its acceleration much more slowly, right? It's, it's accelerating, you know, you know, it's, you know, experiencing less acceleration. That's because we reduce, you know, the acceleration from 30 to 10. And so, you know, that's kind of a, that's kind of very powerful, let me say. So we didn't have to write any of the code, you know, for every time pre is called, every time it's updated, you know, we don't have to calculate, okay, it's current position and, you know, how much acceleration is it currently experiencing and what is its current speed and direction and then calculate the next pixel, you know, where to draw the ship next in order to create the animation to correct the movement effect. We just give it a, you know, a property and say, here is your acceleration. 
here is the direction of the acceleration, and then it works out, you know, how many pixels to move that image, you know, each time uh, update is called, which is being called right here, Oops. right here. So we set an acceleration and we tell update the simulation, essentially update the physics simulation that is this game, uh, this in, uh, and then it re, you know moves the sprite, certain number of pixels in the correct direction based on its like well this game like this engine doesn't get doesn't allow you to set weight a real physics engine would allow you to specify okay the ship weighs this much and so it has a certain amount of inertia and the more you know the acceleration is affected or the amount of momentum it has is affected and so on so you don't you don't have that in this so all you can set is you can set the <clears throat> sprites speed direction and acceleration but that's you know good enough for this game that's for sure Okay, so that's, you know, so that's, in a nutshell, you know, what we're talking about when we say, you know, it's basically a, a rudimentary physics engine that we can use to set properties on the sprites, you know, and then the engine will, will basically update its position based on those three properties, direction, speed, and acceleration. Any questions about that? Does that make sense? Oh, well, yeah, it's pretty useful. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So now the problem is, is when we ran it, is it goes off the screen, and that's kind of troublesome too. You know, do we really need to, you know, monitor its position, and when its x y coordinates leave the canvas, you know, then we have to do something? That would be a lot of bother, uh, a lot of extra coding. So, but what we do have is something called a domain. So each sprite, we can define a boundary, a rectangle. Uh, into which the, uh, and I think we could also do a circle, but I don't, and I always use a rectangle. Anyway, we can define a rectangle in which the, the, pos the position of the ship is constrained. And so, I mean, there's a, there's, a, the, there's a method on Sprite called set domain. So what we're going to do is we're going to set here in the uh, initialization and in setup, we're gonna sh set the ship's domain, it's a rectangle. And it's just like a box, you know, specifying a box in when we drew boxes and, and rectangles uh, before. We set the upper, the X and Y of the upper left hand, and then the X and Y of the lower right hand. And notice what we're setting it is we're setting it to the upper left hand, lower right hand, the, the, the basically the edge of the screen. And now when the physics engine tries to move the sprite out, outside of its domain, outside that rectangle, it reflects. So it's coming in at this angle and then reflects at a bleak angle, you know, at the same momentum. So it hits the edge, leaves the edge at, at the angle, and um, but continues, um, you know, has the same momentum, same speed and momentum. All right. Now it's acting kind of weird because remember it's bouncing off the edge with the same momentum, but we're applying a, in fact, it might be more useful to turn it back on because it's more uh, to put the rotation back on because it's easier to understand, to visualize if I do. Yeah. So, so it's going to bounce off. So you hit it and it's going to bounce off. But remember, the so it's losing speed because we're continuing to apply acceleration against you know against the direction it's moving against its uh, you know its uh, its momentum its direction. So this, you know it looks kind of a weird and kind of interesting pattern that it's following path I should say that it's following, but keep all the time this game is pushing the in the the ship the sprite in that direction. Okay, does that make sense? So it's kind of interesting. All right, cool. All right. So setting that's the domain. Domain time. Oh, good. Um, yeah. So another thing is transparency. So this is kind of a basic concept. And I already touched on this before. You know, I said, you know, well, who cares about transparency? Well, again, if you're, you know, in a in a professional setting. You probably, uh, it's a very good chance, I mean, um, if you step up for it, 
you know, you need to build a page, an HTML page, uh, or, or, a, or a, a screen in uh, Android or iOS, those tools and so on. So here are two images, one without transparency, one with transparency. So if I go into the game and I set a, a broken image, I give it a broken chip image that's also in that um, data folder. And let's run it again. No, so here's the same image, except instead of a transparent background, I give it, you know, a white background. So the backgrounds are white pixels. And, you know, it doesn't look right, right? It, it ruins the effect. It ruins the experience, uh, obviously, right? So, you know, that's the idea of transparency. Um, some pixels uh, can, be, are, are, can be set to transparent. Um, oh, this is very much. So there's here again. Here's an image. This background is transparent pixels. There's still pixels here, but the way those pixels are treated is if they're invisible. When when PowerPoint renders this image on top of this text, it treats these pixels. They're still there, but they're invisible. And they have this alpha you know, or transparent. And then here's you know the same pixels, but white. So, you know, what can, how can you do that? Well, what you need, what you can use is, um, is a image editor. So this is an image editor called paint.net and it's a really nice editor, you know, so uh, professional, you know, you may be familiar with um, Photoshop or there's another a free open source version of Photoshop called GIMP. And there's actually a bunch of other edit, editing tools. And the downside is Photoshop, as an example, is really complex. You know, that's a tool that professional artists, graphics designers, and graphic designers, and so on, will use. And so it's very powerful, lots of effects, lots of capability, but you know, very, very complex, hard to learn. Uh, Paint.net has all of the capabilities you need. You know, it allows you to do transparency and layers, but you know, as much, much much simpler than Photoshop, so it's much easier to learn how to use. And uh, that's what we're looking at. You know, we're looking at a transparent image. This, uh, these pic, there's still pixels here, but the pixels are set, you know, to be, uh, to be, uh, we'll have an alpha zero or opaque or transparent. I should say. And, um, and this, little, you know, the little checkerboard is just an indication of, you know, that, you know, there's pixels, you know, every rectangle is, every image is a rectangle. And that, that's its boundaries, but the, the again the um, uh, it, it shows a checkerboard pattern, you know where the you know the images are, are transparent or invisible. Okay. So Paint.net is a great tool that you don't have to use. Simple, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, depends on your collision detection. We'll talk about that next time. Okay, transparency. I talked about the main content. Nah, talked about it. Um, okay, so the last slide, and good. Yeah, because that's where I left off. Uh, is the animation. So, like I said before, and I just I already covered it. You know, you know, we can uh, again. The sprite library has a, phys a very rudimentary physics engine built in, and we can set properties like acceleration, direction, and speed, and it'll affect how far and which direction. The sprite moves on the canvas, you know, uh, from one frame to the next, um, and you can play with that. And you know, the examples are pretty good. All right, that's as far as I want to get today. Um, little, I'm, I'm ending a little bit early, but uh, that's okay. Uh, I'll see you on Wednesday. Don't forget the uh, features list is due this evening, and uh, that's it. Oh, and you got the uh, yeah, the word of the word. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.